Hello friends, welcome back to the part 3 of this tutorial series. In this part, we will be creating our brand new Nest.js API project. So for that, I already created a brand new folder in my hard drive and as you can see here, and I already navigated uh, to that project folder using my terminal. So if I type dir, I'm, I'm using Windows, so dir is the command. As you can see, I'm inside this directory. All right. So in order to create the project, we will use the CLI, the nest CLI that we installed previously. The command to create the new project is nest new, then your project name. I will name the backend project as API and I'll give it an give it a flag of hyphen G so that it does not initialize the git repository so once you do that hit enter and give it some time to scaffold the project it'll ask you which package manager you want to use so in my case i will be using npm but if, if you have yarn installed you can point to yarn and hit enter so we'll stick to npm hit enter give it a few seconds and in the meantime let let me open my ide okay i'll copy the project path from here open webstorm right so let me check the terminal again it's still installing or scaffolding the project okay so it's done as you can see Let me put in the path. This is my API folder. Hit OK. Perfect. You see, we have a brand new Nest project up and running. So, if you see on the left hand side, the project structure is more or less similar to an angular project in case if you have worked with angular before so we have a source folder here then we have the app controller app module app service and the main.ts file which actually bootstraps your nest application or node application rather okay so it's listening on port 3000 by default we'll change it to port 5000 and let me Put a then function here or then method here because this, this returns a promise all right and uh, that's about it for the for the moment i'll remove the spec file because we will not be performing any unit testing in this tutorial so next we have a test folder here if you want you can remove it i'll keep it there but we'll never use it next we have the eslint dot js file which defines the rules for your linting and here i'll remove the prettier command next is the prettier rc we will not be using prettier so we can ignore it then we have the nest cli dot json file so it tells you the collection and the source root here and of course we have the package dot json where we have the various scripts available and the dependencies okay so this is the regular stuff and you will find a similar similar structure when we create our angular application so if you open the app controller so this is the default controller and you have a function here okay with a get decorator so in nest we use decorators to define the type of uh, function we expect that particular method to perform okay for example this app controller class has got a controller decorator so by putting this controller decorator nest just know knows that this is a controller similarly this get uh, decorator tells nest that this function will take a get request 
okay we'll accept a get request similarly if you open the app module folder we have the imports array controllers array and the providers array so in the providers we have we define the services that we are planning to use and this is again a decorator the module decorator similarly for services we have the injectable decorator so we can inject this service in, in in the controller and other places and as you can see this control this controller is calling our service and there is a method get hello here which is returning a string okay so and the way we are using this app service is using dependency injection so we are injecting the service in the constructor of this class as a private variable and by doing this the nest.js framework knows that you are intending to inject this service so that you can use it here so it creates a local variable in the in the backend or behind the scenes so that you can reference it in your methods here all right so let's run it and see what we get so i'll i'll use the local terminal here and make sure you're navigated inside the api project and you can simply type npm start for the first time so it'll take few seconds to build the project and start the local server okay it says nest application successfully started now i can open my browser uh, let me open chrome i can type localhost 5000 okay it says hello world and this is coming from our controller so when you hit the url it uh, goes to the controller here and then the controller checks for a get uh, method or, or get request here so this is marked as get so this method will be called and this method in turn is calling the get hello function which is present in, in the app service and here we're getting hello world or like, let's change it to hello uh, nest JS. save the changes but this application does not reload automatically because we are not using the development server here so stop the server and type npm run start dev so this will start a development server in watch mode and then we can go back to the browser not this one refresh it and we get the new string here right so this is all about the nest project creation and the files and folder structure in the next video we will create our first resource as they call it that will be our post resource where we'll be creating the post controller the post service and the post module right so till then please leave your comments in the comment section below i'll see you in the next video thank you and have a wonderful day